Good morning. Good morning. And a warm welcome to you in church. And um, isn't it beautiful and warm? Uh, a warm welcome to you in, in the hall. And uh, a warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. And um, we're using the, the, the Book of Common Prayer service uh, morning prayer. So if you're following at home, it's page 101 is the, the place uh, where we'll be starting in the book. Um, it's, it's great. Uh, now, I have very few announcements. One is to remind you that um, Christian Aid, we put Christian Aid envelopes out with the magazines in May. And uh, if, you, if you have a, a donation to Christian Aid, please, if you drop it into the collecting boxes on the way out of church or the hall, or if you aren't able to get and uh, drop it through the rectory door, We'll make sure that Christian Aid uh, receive all your donations. Now, uh, worship uh, next Sunday. Um, next Sunday, the, the church is the first Sunday in June, and we usually mark the, the anniversary of the church. The church was consecrated and opened on the 2nd of June, 1831. Uh, this year, that makes the building uh, 190 years old, which is quite some age and uh, we'll mark that uh, as, as we always do. It's a gift day and, and also uh, ordinarily uh, it's the Sunday, all the Sunday school children uh, come to church and, and of course we hope that they'll be here uh, in church uh, next, next week uh, for a party <laughs> uh, to mark uh, uh, the anniversary of our buildings. Well, uh, and I, I do hope uh, that if, and, and if those of you who are maybe away and maybe watching online, uh, I am aware that quite a few of you are away. Um, I do hope uh, that you're enjoying uh, where, wherever you are uh, in Northern Ireland uh, this, this weekend, because I know uh, up the North Coast, I've heard a few of you uh, have gone there. So do pray that you enjoy uh, your break and get uh, refreshment. Probably the first weekend where we've been able uh, to, to truly get away uh, and, and enjoy and have the weather as well. So, uh, but we're, we're here and we're now going to uh, join together in worshipping God. So we'd ask you if you would stand with me and we'll join in the words of uh, the greeting. Let's uh, share together in the words of the greeting. The Lord be with you. And on this Trinity Sunday, uh, we read Revelation 4 and verse 8. Round the throne of God, day and night, they never cease to sing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Hymn number 321.
beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us pray. We sung of the, the majesty of, of God and, and as we will read in Isaiah, uh, as Isaiah expresses uh, his own uh, unworthiness, uh, we now take uh, a moment to uh, come before God and uh, bring our, our sins before him uh, and confess them in the words of the confession. Almighty God, our mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 uh, to, to 8. And uh, I preached on this uh, passage on the earlier service on Facebook. Uh, it is a beautiful passage of scripture as uh, Isaiah uh, looks uh, to the future after the, the good king Isaiah has died and he's concerned, concerned uh, for the future. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him was seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand together and share together in the reading of the appointed psalm for this morning, psalm number 29. The Lord, the Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the honour due his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Siron like a young wild ox. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. 
The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Open our ears, glorious Lord Christ, to hear the music of your voice above the chaos of his world. Open our eyes to see the vision of your glory, for you are King, now and forever. Thanks be to God. Would you please uh, be seated as John comes to read our Gospel. And the reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 17, which tells us about Jesus teaching Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they were born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And how can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not answer our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you now do not believe. I then will believe if I speak of heavenly things. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Living God, may the experience of your love the reality of your grace and the knowledge of your constant presence continue to transform our lives each day so that we may live and work for you more faithfully to the glory of your name. And may the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Human life offers us a wealth of varying experiences which in their own way can reveal something of God's personality and his character to us. At times you may be awestruck by the creative power of nature. A number of years ago, I was fortunate enough to stay at a hotel on the rim of an active volcano in Hawaii, which is one of the most amazing natural sights of the world. And it illustrates the beauty and the strength of natural forces. This is God operating on a gigantic scale. And we can also be left breathless by man-made beauty, the first sight of a famous picture, uh, which I remember standing in a gallery in the British Museum in London, 
and looking at some of Michelangelo's sketches for the Last Supper. It was as if I was standing on holy ground, looking at the work of one of the greatest and most creative minds ever. Or listening to a gifted museum or musician bringing to life the work of a composer can inspire similar feelings of awe who supplied the gift or the talent. At times in our lives, we can sense a togetherness which is reassuring and comforting. It can be with somebody who knows us all and all our shortcomings and still has time for us. Someone who knows there are no secrets or no judgments. No words need to be spoken as we communicate in silence. And if we could be with a close friend, or a relative, or a partner. Have you ever faced a difficult decision and felt yourself overtaken by a directing power? When we look back, we can see a guiding hand helping us through. In all three instances, this is God at work in us. Today is Trinity Sunday. God is three in one, and one in three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And how can this be, you may ask? There have been many attempts to try to bring this mystery into our level of understanding. Some have said that the Trinity is like water in its three phases, steam, liquid, and ice. Others have said the Trinity is like the same person with three different titles, such as a woman. She could be a mother, a sister, and a daughter, all at the same time. While others have compared the Trinity to an apple pie, which is cut into three distinct pieces, yet the filling in the middle all runs together as one. The Bible readings for today illustrate ways in which our three in one God can variously operate, in doing so, reveal himself to us. In the Old Testament reading appointed for today, we have looked at how Isaiah, who was worshipping in the temple, was granted a vision of God, which by its wonder and glory made Isaiah conscious of his own shortcomings. Woe oh, am I, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among people of unclean lips, and I have seen God. This is God in majesty, high and lifted up, enthroned in heaven, transcendent, awesome, breathtaking, and Isaiah responds with a desire to worship. In contrast to Isaiah's response, many people would sympathise with the view that today's world has lost its sense of wonder. Science has explained so many of its mysteries. Technology has enabled us to achieve such a lot of what was once beyond our reach. And as we have pushed back the boundaries of our knowledge, are we in danger of thinking we no longer need to believe? We can answer all the questions ourselves, or can we? Who put the colours in the rainbow? Or who put the tree inside the acorn? Simple questions, but questions which point to the wonder of God's creation. And the notion that science can answer all our questions has had a spin-off in the area of Christian spirituality. An emphasis on relevance, immediacy, and the need to understand everything we do threatens to strip our worship of the otherworldliness which is an essential ingredient to its very nature. Some may want our worship to entertain us, like Britain's Got Talent. However, one of the main elements of worship is not what we can get for ourselves, but what we can give to God. To discover the full richness of our humanity, we need those occasions which bring us to our knees and make us aware of the otherness of God and our dependency on him, as well as the experiences which makes us feel good. When Isaiah encountered God in the temple, he cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The earth is full of his glory. 
and some of today's worship we an overemphasis in knowing Jesus, seeing Jesus as our friend. And it leads us to forget one of the other aspects of the Trinity, the majesty and the mystery of God. There is a tension in the Trinity, and when we begin to concentrate on one aspect only, the others will suffer. Trinity Sunday reminds us that our relationship with God is indeed complicated at times. This morning's gospel passage tells of God at work in another way. Nicodemus was a respected Pharisee and anything but a novice in religious faith and practice. He pays a discreet visit to Jesus, wanting to know what Jesus means when he talks of being born from above. Jesus has said that new birth was a prerequisite for entry into the kingdom of God. And Jesus explains how we can make a new start by opening ourselves to the working of the Holy Spirit. Like the wind which we heard about last Sunday, the Holy Spirit of God is invisible and unpredictable. Its power is proof enough of its reality. Things will happen under its direction and guidance. In the New Testament, St. Paul elaborates the Spirit of God, if allowed free access to the human heart, will purify it of evil, inspire it, and initiate new life. There will be a changed relationship with God. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we become his children, happy to call him our Father. And that is why we confess our sins every Sunday here in church and begin a new week with a clean slate hoping that God will enable us not to make such a mess in the incoming seven days. For Christian people, the most familiar person of the Trinity is our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, bring us his teaching and through the church's calendar we keep track of his life. We have just spent the last six months walking alongside him from Advent and preparation for his coming through Christmas and his birth. We follow Jesus as he begins his ministry through to his crucifixion, his death and his resurrection and ascension right up to last Sunday when we commemorate the fulfilment of his promise to send the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Jesus told Philip Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus is accessible to us, and as Christians, we seek to establish a trusting friendship that becomes part of our daily lives. We discover him as our Saviour, the person who can persuade us of our infinite value to God. The Christian life is a journey where we try, by the help and encouragement of the Holy Spirit, to become more Christ-like. For most of us, this is a long process, and not like St. Paul's Damascus Road conversion. There will be days when our journey of faith is in tune with God, and other days when our witness will be less than perfect. The Christian doctrine of God as three in one the Holy Trinity, is an attempt to express our experience of God the Father as Creator, God the Son, the Redeemer, who shows us what the Father is like, and God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one who enables us and gives us the strength to live our lives as Christians. We may never understand God as God is a mystery, a God that can be fully explained might fall apart in the process of explanation. So long as we can echo the words of hymn number seven, my God, how wonderful thy art, thy majesty, how bright. It doesn't really matter if we don't understand the complexities of the doctrine of the Trinity. So since today is Trinity Sunday, the day we are called upon to pay special attention to the way God has been revealed in the Christian faith, we should consider the Trinity. Of 
course, God is a whole lot bigger than anything we can say or that we can imagine. So all references to God may be incomplete. At the same time, this vision of the Trinity of God is true, and it matters, and it makes a difference. There are two fundamental perspectives that we can bring to the Trinity, to the doctrine that one God exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On the one hand, the Trinity describes the way that we as Christians experience God. We know God as God is revealed in the person and the life of Jesus. And this revelation happens by and through the Holy Spirit. And that is, the Trinity speaks to how we discover and experience who God is. This is the perspective usually offered when talking about the Trinity. But there is more. The doctrine of the Trinity also talks about who God is. It talks about what God is really like inside. Once upon a time, way before the beginning of everything, not at the beginning, but before the beginning, God the Father, who is love and therefore must love, speaks his own name. He says his own word. And God the Son is begotten. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. The Son is the second person of the Trinity. And later, after the beginning, the Son will become incarnate from the Virgin Mary and will be born as Jesus of Nazareth. The Son is what happens when the Father expresses himself, when the Father reaches out in his love. Now, the Son loves the Father. The Son is the Father's Word and the Father's Self. And the Father loves the Son totally and without reservation. And so the Father and the Son are bound together in love. And this love, which binds them together, the Father and the Son, is also real. This love is God the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Spirit are the same substance as the Father. And that's the only stuff that there is. In this way, the Godhead is complete. Three persons, each distinct, each real, each from before the beginning, each and all are one God. Amen. Let us pray. And God, we thank you for being all-powerful and all-knowing and for loving us. We thank you for the things in life that we don't completely understand and for giving us the faith to believe them anyway. In the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn again to our hymn book and uh, hymn number... 700. Holy God, we praise thy name.
in the prayer books to page 112 and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect of Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. For you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's share together in the second and third collects from morning prayer. O Lord, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, may we glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our prayers of intercession for this, uh, this Sunday, Trinity Sunday, we bring our prayers to God the Father who first loved us and made us in his own image, to God the Son who loved us and washed away our sins in his own blood, to God the Holy Spirit who spreads the love of God abroad in our hearts. And so we raise our prayers this morning. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people. We pray for George, our Bishop, and all who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell which richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. We pray uh, for uh, our own governments in London, we pray for our local administration 
here in Belfast, in Stormont. Very mindful of the, the rocky roads uh, that we've been on over many, many years and uh, the change that is, is happening at this time. We pray, Father, uh, that uh, you'll give our local politicians a desire uh, to work uh, together to further the, a, the, the community as a whole. And as we think on world leaders, we ask you to give them all the desire to work for international unity, which seeks to halt the threat of war and terrorism, for ways uh, to ensure that all nations have full access to COVID vaccines and all the resources uh, that support those in hospital. And that the common good of all humanity be served by the leaders of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Son of God, we pray for our church and for all those who live and work in this parish. And um, as, as we think on this uh, rural parish, this rural context, uh, we know that many are, are still working from home. So we pray for them in their efforts. But we also pray for those who have always been working from home, those who farm the land. And we thank you, Father, for those who farm the land in this parish and across our nation, uh, for all that they provide uh, for us uh, through their efforts. And we pray, Father, for them. And we pray your protection uh, uh, on, uh, on us uh, as the restrictions uh, related to COVID are lifted. We pray, Father, that as, as we go forward cautiously, uh, we pray, Lord, uh, that your protection uh, would be over us. And speak your word of peace in our midst. And help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Spirit of God, we pray for those who do not believe and for those who are hesitant in their belief or hesitate to believe. Father, we'd ask that your Holy Spirit would fill their hearts, open their ears to hear your voice, and uh, that they may uh, receive you, the very Spirit of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And gracious God, we pray for those who are weighed down with grief, fear, or sickness at this time. And Father, uh, we remember those from our parish who have been bereaved, we remember those particularly in this last uh, 15 months who have carried that so often on their own. We pray, Father, uh, that uh, they have known that they are not alone, that you have been with them and you continue to be with them. And we remember those who are sick. And as, and as we've been asked, uh, we, we pray for, for Jimmy this morning uh, in public worship. And we name before God all those in the quietness of our hearts in need of his healing at this time. And for all those that we have named today, may Christ, your living word, bring them comfort and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. And loving God, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith of Christ, and we rejoice with them and all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word of life eternal, fulfilled through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayers, and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, our final hymn as we go from church is hymn number 316 uh, from the hymn book.
you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen.